sort of have mixed emotions today because we're starting the first item of our final Halloween bundle for 2018. But uh, I guess it kind of is a, a bit of a hybrid bundle and it'll help you sort of transition into fall with uh, a few of the pieces here. The first piece in our uh, Halloween bundle here is entitled The Haunting House. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin by, as usual, uh, kind of starting off with some um, paper piecing slash kind of gluing things down flat just to kind of prepare things. And if you guys loved our, uh, our fairy village, you're going to love this one as well. Uh, this one is probably the spookiest of the three, but it's really cool and perfect for Halloween. Um, so what we're going to do is, first off, we're going to glue our vellum down. We're going to do all the vellum from the inside. You want to find this piece here, the one with the three windows. This is the back of the, of the structure here. And I'm just going to lay these out so that you know what goes where as far as the vellum goes. And there's a series of dots here, and that is to kind of um, let out some light so that we can kind of uh, light the little bat wings that we have for this item. So you can kind of see, just make sure that these circular pieces, just make sure that they fit over the holes and have a little bit of space around them. Okay, and uh, we're gonna get these glued down, then we're gonna put on the uh, other pieces on the front and just kind of get ready to uh, put this thing together at the end once we get everything in place. So I'm going to start with just a series of dots around the perimeter of this piece. Now this little piece of vinyl here, or vellum I should say, is kind of warped a little bit. So I want to kind of unbend it so that it goes on nicely. You're not going to see any of this stuff from the outside. So don't worry too much about being perfect with this. I always like to start with little paper piecing sections like this, just to kind of get a feel for our glue bottle and kind of get into a rhythm with our crafting and, and save the more quote unquote challenging parts to the end, even though there's nothing really overly challenging about any of these pieces. Um, do they take a little bit of time? Sure. But are they difficult? I don't think so. I think that's a state of mind. If you, uh, if you go into it thinking I can't do this, then you probably won't be able to do it. But as long as, as long as you have the time, and as long as you can follow along, there's absolutely no reason why you can't make these projects. So I'm um, just kind of putting the glue down for this piece here. And this one's kind of all connected so that we could kind of do it in all in one fell swoop here. Just make sure that you're covering up the little cutouts for the windows, because these are also going to be little luminaries, which is really cool. Because you definitely, when you think Halloween, you definitely think, well, things that light up, jack-o'-lanterns and lanterns. And um, <clears throat> I really like to, when I decorate my house, include lights all over the place. Okay, so that's it for the vellum on the inside. Now, um, this piece here, you wanna go ahead and just kinda get an eyeball for how it's gonna go down. And I think the, uh, the main thing to look at here are these little dots here. You just wanna make sure that you get those lined up so that you're not obstructing them. So we can actually go ahead and get that glued down. Just make sure that you're getting that glue right out to the edges there so you don't have anything peeling up. And I kind of like the way that my glue bottle is flowing today. It's coming out nicely, but very subtle. Just get the glue all over there. Don't overdo it on the glue. You don't need that much. Okay, so I'm gonna place this down, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm kind of just looking at, looking for the little cutouts there as my guide, making sure that those are all aligned nicely and that will ensure that you get everything nice and centered. Now this is the back, again, kind of starting in an area that 
is going to be less visible just to kind of get into a groove. Because if you, you mess up the back, it's not the end of the world because you're not going to see the back as much as the front. So definitely start on things that are simple and maybe less visible just to kind of get your feet wet. So you can see where the windows are going to go or the window frames. So just make sure that I'm going to place them over the little cutouts and make sure that they fit. They're all kind of the same shape and there's not really a label on them, but they only fit one way. So just make sure that you're getting the right one in the right place. Um, now, as for inking, I did ink this with a, a gray and I found that the gray just uh, didn't give me the contrast I was looking for. So I took a uh, black and used a black, but just didn't apply as much. So it acted like a nice gray and that give me, gave me the desired effect. Okay, now the windows here, I did ink these and also ran them through a embossing folder called Tiny Dot. And if I have it handy, I'll show you what it looks like. I believe that one is by Sizzix. It might actually be a Tim Holtz embossing folder. And again, that's gonna always add some interest to every piece and some dimension. And the real fun thing for me and for you is anytime you add embossing, if you have some light that's hitting it, you'll notice that it kind of, uh, the light kind of plays with the, uh, the embossing. You got shadows on one side and highlights on the other, and it just makes for a much more interesting final result. Okay, so now we're gonna glue this side down or this piece down, just like we did the other one. Okay, this is gonna go together pretty quick actually. I think this one's probably the quickest of the three because it's kind of square and it doesn't have a lot of tabs. So if you wanna make a quick one, this one would be the quickest, I think, of the three. All right, so again, just kind of looking at the dots or the window, use those as a guide to help you with the placements. And there we go, just like that, okay. And just run your finger along the edge to get that nice and in place. And then we'll finish that off with a little frame around our window. And that will complete two sides of our haunting house. These are gonna be really cute all together. I think based on their scale, they would also work really well <coughs> with the, uh, the Midnight Manor that we did. Okay, so there you go. There you have it. One side's done. Let's take a look at the other side. Yeah, and this is gonna go pretty quick. Okay, so let's get this out of the way for just a second and get our vellum ready to go here in just a moment. And of course, you wanna go ahead and fold everything at the score marks just to kind of get it ready. It's easier to do it now. Use your table as you're folding. Don't try to fold it in midair because you're gonna end up creasing your pieces and you don't wanna do that. You wanna keep everything nice and crisp. So use your table as much as you can to keep things nice and flat. All right, let's flip it over so that we're looking at the inside. Now this large piece, is gonna go right in here. And now what we wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've got the main top part here covered up. Now you can see that there's a cutout here. It's like a coffin shaped cutout. And then there's a little cutout here. And that's for our little lantern as well as uh, the front of the door. Okay, so my suggestion would be to just make sure that you're not obstructing the center part of the door here, okay? And then also use the little triangular shape here at the top of the lantern to match that up with the triangular shape here on the vellum. Okay, so we are gonna need uh, glue and I'm gonna use a very thin line here, maybe just even a squiggly sort of pattern. Just kind of go around the perimeter like so. Make sure you get that glue 
in as many little places here as you can so that it doesn't stick out <clears throat> or it doesn't pull apart or pull off, I should say, not stick out. I think that's good. So again, I'm focusing my eye on the door and the little triangles on the soon-to-be lantern area. First off there, just like that, and then the rest of that will fall into place. Okay, so just dots like that are more than enough to hold the vellum in place, and that's all we need. Okay, now <clears throat> we've got, got this little this little belt buckle sort of looking vellum. And that's gonna cover up the little triangle as well as the little circle there below. But there's gonna be a hole in the center so that it doesn't obstruct the yellow that's there in the center of the lantern. So just do a, little, do a few little dots around the perimeter of our soon to be lantern, the thinner part at the bottom. And make sure that you're covering up the little triangle Let's take a look at that on the other side. And that looks pretty good. Okay, let's get the other one in place. Just a few dots around the perimeter. Don't put any in the middle there. And again, just cover up that little circle, cover up the triangle, give it a little push, and voila. And then we've got this piece here for the center of the door. So if you take a look at <coughs> where you want the glue, you just want to work around the around the perimeter there. It's close to the inside of my yellow as possible. And then I'm going to put a few dots here in the center as well. And just make sure you get that nice and centered. And voila. Okay. So that is that. And then we also have a little window on the side here. So we're going to put our vellum down there. And I'm just gonna just casually add the glue around the perimeter there. Make sure that you get it nice and over the little cutout area. There we go. And that just leaves two little circles for these little holes here for some additional light spillage. Just put that on there like that. Just like that. Okay, there we go. All right, let's take a look at our vellum. <clears throat> I'd say that looks pretty good. Okay, and um, now you can go ahead and put, we'll put this one on first. This one's pretty, this one's a lot easier, I think. Uh, the other, this other piece on the front, it's got a lot more detail and we're gonna, we're gonna go through it all. It's not too bad. It's pretty straightforward actually. But go ahead and get your glue, work it out to the edges here. It's supposed to mimic kind of like a stony look. So if you don't have any paper that looks like a stone, you could find like a stone embossing folder maybe and just emboss it with a stone texture if you want. Or, or just a gray pattern would work too. I think that because we have these, these rough edges here in the design, it almost gives the impression of brickwork or stonework, even without having the actual stones in the pattern, so that's fine. All right, let's, um, let's polish this off by adding the little window frame. Okay, like so. And just get that nice and centered. There we go. All right, now let's take a look at <clears throat> the little details for the front. Okay, we're gonna start obviously with our large piece here and then everything else will just kind of fall into place. So also you can see here that that was all also inked. It does kind of give it a, a creepy look. Uh, if, you, if you've got gray and you kind of ink it with a darker gray or a very light inking with black or get crazy and go heavy with the black. Uh, this is, to me anyway, I, I don't really think there's any rules to this, but I would say that when it comes to Halloween, you definitely have a little more leeway when it comes to inking because it's 
you know, it's not the most polished holiday. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these holes here above the door to kind of guide me. And there's also some holes here as well. And the little circle on the door to kind of help me and the lantern, obviously, to help me with the positioning of this because it's uh, you want to make sure that you're not obstructing any of the vellum portions here so that the light can come through nicely. And that will also help ensure that your piece is nice and properly centered. So that is perfect. And you can see what that vellum is going to start looking like once, uh, once we shine a light, a light inside there. Okay. So next on the agenda here, I'm going to start from the top. Uh, well, actually, let's start from the bottom and then go to the top just so I can make a uh, Drake reference. And that will be coming here shortly. All right, so let's start here. Okay, this piece is going to go on first. And um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Let's get this glued down. Now, careful, there are some holes here on this piece to let that, let that light shine through the vellum. Uh, so just get your glue out there. And then this piece here, make sure that you get that glue right out to the tip of that. Okay, and I also inked and embossed this to give it a little more texture to make it look kind of creepy. Um, and just use, you know, again, use the little holes as an initial guide maybe to help with the positioning and then the circle and then the, uh, the crossbones. And then finally, check your edges as well to make sure that this is nice and flush on the bottom. There we go. I think getting it flush on the bottom is probably one of the more important things here. And then also this little, these little tiny sections here, just make sure that they're nice and lined up with um, the edges here. Oops. All right, stick down, there we go. All right, next up is our little coffin here. I'm gonna put that down right on top of this piece. Now this is, I believe this is probably a DCWV paper and it had a white core. As you can see, it's got a white back as well. So I hit the edges with a little bit of ink just so that the white wouldn't show through too much. And just lay that over, use maybe the crossbones as a guide or whatever, whatever your eye locks on, use that as a guide to help you position that correctly. And that looks good. All right, you can see there's a little, little bonus spook there built into it. Now I've got two little lanterns. We're gonna affix those to the front here. Just a few little dots here, you don't need a lot. And you don't have to worry about getting out all the way out to the edge because it's really not gonna go anywhere as long as you get just enough on there and make sure you get it nice and centered. Pardon my head. I've experimented with so many different angles I don't like the overhead angle. It just, it's kind of, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of confusing. I tried putting the camera behind me a little bit more, but then I, I kind of want to feel like you're just sitting next to me, looking over my shoulder, or not over my shoulder, but just sitting next to me. So this is as good as it gets, and you have to see my, so you have to see my big head every once in a while. I think that's okay. All right, so our lanterns are in place. Now we've got this piece here. I'm going to get that glued down, okay? Just get your glue on here. Go very sparse on the glue here. You don't need a lot. And that will stay in place just fine. And then kind of just maybe a few little streaks here and there. Perfect. Okay, get that lined up nicely. Find a, find a focal point, stick with it, and press it down. Okay. And we have a second overlay for this. And you're gonna use these little cutouts here as a guide for placement. And you want to get them right over the cutouts from the previous layer so that they don't obstruct the light that's gonna come through there. Okay. 
And I'm focusing my gaze on the bottom here, these little cutouts, lining that up, and then the rest should just fall into place, which it did. Okay, that just leaves our top window. So here comes the reference. And we started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom and all my crafters are here. And I don't know if, I don't know how many of you got that reference, but that's okay. And looking at, oh, by the way, there's a little story behind this. When, uh, <clears throat> when Ron designed this, he added pumpkin up here. That there is a little black cat peeking out the top window. That looks like something my cat would do. Um, probably stalking a bird, maybe a raven, or in the case of pumpkin, a chipmunk. He hasn't graduated to squirrels yet. I think he's probably gonna stay away from them, but he's definitely a fan of the chipmunks lately. All right, now this piece here, this overlay, um, there's gonna be a little bit of black underneath there, so don't try to line it up at the bottom, line it up at the top. <clears throat> okay, so, um, well, the basic overlays for all four sides are pretty much done now. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry a little bit before I start messing with it. In the meantime, I'm gonna grab the bat wings that make up the roof here. We're gonna get these glued down, okay? So as you can see, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna just glue that right onto that pattern piece there and repeat the same thing on the other side. And now it's gonna be important that we get a good amount of glue on this because we're gonna end up training this and curving it. It's not gonna be straight, it's gonna be kinda, of, uh, it's gonna be rounded ever so slightly. So make sure that you get plenty of glue on this. Don't glop it on, but just make sure that you have most, the majority of the area covered with the glue. And just get that lined up. And I didn't get it lined up very well. There we go. Beautiful. And just give that a press. And we're going to let this sit for a bit so that when we do go to train this ever so slightly, it will have a nice firm hold and uh, won't come peeling apart. Definitely work your way out to the little ends there of the, of the wing. I don't know what they're called, ribs. That sounds tasty right now. Okay, there we go. And just get that aligned. Pardon my head. Push that down, I'm gonna lift it up and it's a lot easier to kind of nudge it around when you have it in your hands, I think, anyway. All right, we'll push that down, give that a chance to set. I'm gonna put this off to the side for a moment. Uh, we'll let that set. That's gonna be, it's gonna make up our roof. We've got these two pieces here. These are essentially these pieces here. I think I'm gonna put these on after everything is kind of already in its dimensional form. And then we also have uh, these pieces which make up our roof and uh, at this point what I think what we're going to do so that we can let all this stuff kind of um, set is work on the little base that we have for this piece this is going to go together in a snap so but anyway let's let that dry and let's take a look at our base for this thing and we've made bases like this before if you've if you've made well, I don't know, I forget which ones, but definitely uh, I think the candle holder, well, many, ca many candle holders, definitely in our last fairy village. All we're doing is we're creating a square platform that has a little lip. And I'm sure that many of you have already made something like this. The dimensions are just different, but the process is gonna be the same. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin by taking glue to these little triangular tabs here. You can see that tab. We're gonna tuck them behind our neighbor to create a 
uh, wall, so to speak, or a, a vertical dimensional wall. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on there. The most important thing here is to just ensure that you're getting it right out to the very edge, right on the corner there where the triangle meets this long piece here. And just tuck that in. If you need to move some tabs out of the way, feel free to do so, so you can get your fingers in there. And just press and hold to allow that to set. Okay. Now, I actually I messed up my intro a couple times, and uh, we haven't even hit 30 minutes yet. Um, actually, it's probably more about, 20, about 25 minutes into the assembly here. So that's pretty darn good considering that um, I would say we have maybe another 10 before we get this done. So I think from an assembly standpoint, um, minus the cutting, and if you decide to ink, you're looking at, as far as the structure goes, maybe about you know, 30, 34, 35 minutes maybe. And I'd say that's not bad. That is, uh, I think, just the right amount of time. Let's say if you... Uh, you want to kind of unwind a little bit and take on a dreaming tree project that's uh this would be a good one so i just put some glue on the next triangular tab tucked it behind the wall of its neighboring piece and I'm just giving it a squeeze and just being patient there the more glue you use the longer you're going to have to hold that together so all right, so you can see the next little triangular tab here. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of glue to it, getting it right out to that very edge. And I'm going to lift up this side here and press that triangular tab along the inside of that wall and give it a squeeze. And you can see what that's looking like. Okay, sometimes the black is a little hard to film because I don't, I don't want to blow out the, the picture. Okay, so that just leaves one more little triangle here. And get our glue on there, right out to the edge, and close this little shape up. And I got a little glue crust there. All right, go to squeeze. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna go together quick, guys. It's good. Oh, and by the way, wait a minute, there is a there should be a little step. I gotta find that little step here. I don't know where it went. Hmm. Maybe it's under here. There it is. Okay, good. All right, so all four of the little triangles are now glued to the walls, so to speak. And now what we can do is we can take these tabs here and fold them in, and get them ready. And what we're going to do is we're going to close this up, but in order to do so, we need to put this piece on here. So what I like to do, you might try to glue all of them at the same time. I don't recommend that. Go ahead and get some glue on one tab. Get a little bit of glue out right along the edge. And I'm just kind of taking my finger, keeping it above the crease there. And I'm just going to glue one side of this down. Get it nice and centered, right out to the edge, nice and flush. And then once you kind of have it in place, you can push down from the inside to really get that to stick. Once again, we're using our table so that we don't crush anything and keep everything nice and crisp. Okay. All right, so that edge looks pretty darn good. Now, this is going to be our top because it's already... This large piece was already part of it, but this is good practice to get a, you know, kind of get our feet wet for the final assembly, which is actually pretty simple because all we're going to be doing is gluing tabs like this. All right, so I'm getting my glue on all the tabs now because we are going to go ahead and close this up in one shot here. Get some glue route to the very edge here. And I'm going to spread that glue right up to the very edge. I haven't, uh, haven't gotten, 
I haven't gotten a lot of glue under my desk yet today, but there we go. For those of you that were waiting. And we're going to go ahead and push this down. Get it nice and centered. Run your finger along the edge here, kind of pushing down and in a little bit. Mostly just pushing down. Get that nice and connected. If you have a little area that maybe is lifting up or is it making full contact with this vertical wall, you can always use the little trick where you put a little glue on a piece of cardstock and just kind of paint it in. I've got, well, oh, that, that actually looks good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so there's our base. And now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put our little lip on here. The lip is comprised of these pieces here. Okay, so you want to go ahead and fold everything at the score marks first. Get everything nice and bent into shape. You know, you always hear people say, yeah, I got really bent out of shape. You never hear anyone coming along and saying, hey, let me, let me bend you back into shape. So maybe this is what they're talking about. Maybe this is the secret to getting back, bent back into shape. Um, so we're gonna put glue on that little triangle and just connect it to the same piece here right next to it. I'm gonna just push that down for a second, let it get its initial hold. I'm gonna fold it over on top of itself and just make sure that they're kind of symmetrical and uh, when they're on top of each other, you shouldn't be able to see the one behind it. That indicates that you've got it lined up perfectly, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this other triangular tab here. You can see it there. Put a little glue on that. If you hear a little banging around in the background, that is just wind outside the studio. It's really windy today. And so we've got the glue on that tab. I'm going to take this side here and I'm just going to push that down and that should connect perfectly. It's a symmetrical piece. It's a perfect square. So it should fit perfectly. Okay. So next up, and I probably should have done this before. I'm going to flatten this out again. I'm going to take these tabs and fold them. Uh, I'm going to do a valley fold. Okay. So that the tabs are sticking out. And just like that. All right, because what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece, we're going to stick it over this piece. And it should just kind of pop right in there like so. And there's our little lip. We can flip this over. And what we're going to do is just put a little bit of glue on this tab here. You don't need to go all the way out to the edge or anything, just a nice thin line right on that tab. Pop that under, I'm going to push it down onto this piece here, but I'm going to use my table to make it easier to press that down. Okay, and then we're going to repeat that three more times to kind of create this little lip thing here. Just a little bit of glue for this. It doesn't need to be completely perfect. And actually I recommend not putting too much glue on here so it doesn't come spilling out when you press this down. A little goes a long way and for what this thing is well, for this piece's function that is more than what we need so don't worry about going too crazy with the glue on there all right last little piece here just a little bit of glue and bam okay and if you want you can kind of bend that back into shape kind of tends to want to curve in but that's fine. And then now this, again, find your bottom, find your top. This is my top. That's a lot cleaner looking. I'm gonna stick that on here. Now you'll notice that on this piece here, there are two little indicators, two little notches. <clears throat> that is where our little step is gonna go. We're gonna put that in later. We're gonna wait. Okay, so now what we wanna do is get our glue on our little lip. Okay, and now this piece, it's kind of important that we do get some out to the edge because we want that to be nice and crisp. Although, even if you don't get it perfect, uh, we do have a nice little overlay that's gonna hide that edge anyway, but we still wanna try to get it close. 
okay? So just pop that right on there. It should fit perfectly. It doesn't matter which way you do it since it's symmetrical. And just kind of push down, work it along the edge. Just make sure that it sits nice and flush there all the way around. And that's good. Now if you have any areas here that are lifting up, I'm going to show you a little trick here. And actually, this might be a good time to do it. Let me grab, let me grab a piece of scrap paper here. All right, so here is my little piece of cardstock. Just any piece of scrap will do. You can take and just put some glue on here. And this is just pretend it's a little thin little paintbrush. I'm going to put my glue on there. Kind of spread it a little thin. Don't put any on the bottom, just on the top. And if you have any areas that lift it up, and actually, I really don't. Maybe just this little corner. You can kind of lift up the little corner and just stick it in there and paint a little bit of glue underneath it. Wipe off any excess and then just push that down and hold that down for a few seconds until it's completely nice and flush. Okay, and that's, that's a good way to go back in and um, clean up any areas that you're not completely happy with because maybe the glue dried really quickly and you just couldn't get to it or you didn't put glue there on accident because you were just kind of doing your best and didn't see that you missed that spot. So it's never too late to go back in and fix it. All right, next up, we've got these two little pieces here. These are little trim pieces that are gonna go around the perimeter of the base. Um, so what we can do is, I would just start on one side. And this one, I would say, doesn't need to be like completely flush. So you don't need to worry about getting glue all the way around, but I would suggest making sure that you get glue right at the end here where it ends, okay? And then what I would do is just kinda pop it on like this, find that corner, and then just pop it right on like that. And just make sure it's nice and centered, and then just run your finger along there. I would focus a little bit more uh, pressure here to make sure that that stays on nicely right at the edge, okay? And then you can take this and flip this out, <clears throat> excuse me, and get that glued into place. Again, making sure that we're getting a little extra glue right out to the very edge there. And go ahead and pop that down onto the edge there. There we go. Okay. And we are going to repeat that same process on the other side. So let's get some glue right here. Make sure you get some glue out to the edge there. And again, I would probably just match up the corner there with the other corner and pop that right on and kind of lift it up. Make sure that it's nice and flush with the top and bottom. Run your finger, a little pressure on the end so that the corners look nice and flush. You can see that there, that looked really, really good. And then we can pop this out and get our glue on the other half. And a little bit right out to the edge. And just pop that right on. There we go. Well, that came out nice. A little pressure on the end there. Bam. Okay. Uh, again, we've got, uh, we've got some grasses that we're going to add to this to kind of spook it up a little bit more too. Um, find the front. This is where your step is going to be. It's, again, there's two little notches there. And the long side of our grass is going to go on this side here. The short side is going to go um, where the step is going to be. Okay, so uh, what I would do is I would begin with, I don't think it really matters, uh, probably going to start with the long side here. And just put glue towards the base here. Obviously, there's nothing for this grass up here to stick to. So I'm just putting glue on the bottom portion where I can anticipate there's going to be something to actually glue it to. Okay, just make sure that you've got it nice and flush with the bottom. 
Okay, that looks good. And then we're gonna glue the other side here in just a moment. Just make sure that that's nice and dry. Okay, and we can flip this out. And again, just put a little line of glue right along the bottom here, all the way to the end, like so. And then just affix that to the side. Make sure it's nice and flush with the bottom. There we go, that's perfect. That fit nicely and accurately, okay. And I think that's good enough. And we're just gonna repeat that same thing again. Just make sure that you're doing it on the side with the little notches. I mean, if you don't, if you mess up, it's fine because you can always just put the, put the little step anywhere, but uh, we just put that there for your convenience so that everything just uh, fits precisely for you. Okay, so I just put a little bit of glue on that one side, make sure that it's nice and flush there. I'm gonna hold it up like this. And just push down, make sure that's nice and flush with the bottom. Like that. Okay, and let's flap, flap. Let's flap our wings. Let's flip this. And a nice little line of glue there. And close that up like that. Make sure that it's nice and lined up with the bottom. I'm just gonna give that a little nudge down. And that is perfect. There we go. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much it for the little base here, uh, minus the step, which we can put together right now. It'll only take a second. And um, you know what you can do to add a little more interest to this piece is grab yourself a dowel and just kind of train this grass out, maybe curl a couple of them and make them all funky. Whatever you want to do to add a little more interest to your piece here. Okay, I'm gonna curl this one a lot. That's fun. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. All right, let's take a look at our little step here. Um, I've already gone ahead and inked uh, the majority of it. Okay, and we're really only gonna see one side of it uh, because we've got this little overlay. So this is the center part. There's a little tab here that's gonna get glued to this section here. And then we've got uh, the sides here. So first and foremost, make sure that you fold all of the tabs. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these little triangular tabs here and we're gonna glue them to our little neighbor here. So I'm gonna fold this in. Let me move that out of the way. Fold that in and glue that to the inside of this piece here. And I'm gonna pull this out of the way so I can get my thumb in there. Okay, come on. It's a little itty bitty piece. Hopefully you can see that. I might need to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so next we're gonna take and put some glue on this little triangular tab. I really gotta wash this uh, Wash the surface here, it's, it's all glue. <laughs> I swear, it's not dirt. Okay, then we're gonna take that and tuck that under, like, like so. This is the piece that I just put the glue on here. And we're gonna glue that tab to the inside of the little neighboring piece here. We're just creating a little step. Just to kinda, it's all in the details, you know? Okay, so that's glued, now, Probably just do this in one shot here. That just leaves these two little triangular tabs. And we're gonna throw some glue on here, get it out to the edge, do the same thing on the other side. Hopefully you can see that, yes you can. And let's close that up. Let me move this back so I can get my finger in here and squeeze that in place. And then the same thing with the other tab that we just put glue on. Get that squeezed into place. Okay, and now we can close it up. And we'll just get glue on all three of these. And again, one side is gonna be the bottom, one side is gonna be the top. 
I'm going to say that this is going to be the bottom since the top is already pretty much put together. So we've got glue on the rest of the tabs here. You can see, and we're just going to close it up. Okay. Now, if you want, now when this, since this thing is all put together, I might actually do this. Uh, take a nice gray or a very light dusting of a black ink. Let me. So usually when I ink, I'll dab it and I'll kind of wipe some of it off on like a scrap piece of paper just so that my, my, initial, my initial load of, my, my initial application, I should say, uh, isn't so deep and dark. Okay. Kind of like that. I, I, I want this step to be more weathered looking because it's it's had a lot of foot traffic and yeah, there's been a lot of water just kind of settling on it all right anyway so um next we've got this little this little piece here there are a series of little score marks on it okay and that's going to go on like this and it's going to wrap around like so so go ahead and we can start in the center here Hopefully that's all. Yeah, it's pretty good focus there for a one-man film crew. All right, so let's get that on. And uh, I don't really think it matters which way you do it. Just pop that right on. Just match it up with the little corners there. Give it a push and push down like that. And now while I'm pushing down there, I can get some glue on these pieces here. Make sure you get it right out to the edge there so that it stays nicely for you. Okay, and then here, and get that glued to place. And there we go, we got a nice little step here. And um, the step, in essence, is just going to get glued right there between those two little, here, you can see them here, I think. Let's see if I can, there you go. You can see the two little notches there. So we're gonna glue that right down in between those notches. I'm gonna get my glue right on the bottom here. A little bit's probably more than enough. And just pop it right in there in between those two little notches and voila. <clears throat> so when we put the actual house on there, It'll have a nice little doorstep, but it won't, you know, it won't, uh, you don't want to glue it to the house because then it might fall off. So we're just going to glue it to the structure there. Anyway, that's it for the base. And we can go back to the actual um, assembly of our main house. All right, pretty straightforward at this point. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to connect these pieces together now, okay? So what I'd recommend doing is just grabbing a tab and let's get our glue on the tab here. And then also, because this is a nice structure here, get some glue right out to the very edge. We want everything to look nice and seamless. Okay, and then I'm gonna spread that glue right out to the very edge there. All right, I'm gonna use my table just because it's going to make it a lot easier. Just line up the bottom, make sure it's nice and lined up, and then match that up. You want it kind of butting up against the score mark that's there for the tab. You don't want to go over it, though. That looks good. Now, I'm going to take this and fold it onto itself, like so, and just kind of run my finger along that seam there just to make sure that it's nice and flush, and it is... So you can see that this is not, not a difficult little piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this like this. And now you'll see here that is going to match up perfectly as well. All we got to do is get our glue on this section here. And again, a nice fine little line right up along that edge. And I'm going to run my finger across that line. There wasn't enough there. I'm going to add a little more. Spread that nice and thin. I can put that down flat. And bam, it should just kind of join up perfectly. Oops. <clears throat> yeah, almost. Not quite.
right, but pretty darn good. There we go. Okay. So, so far I've kind of been working, I've been working flat a lot. Now, I kind of, uh, kind of peeled back some of this paper here. It's like they peeled the top layer off the actual base of the paper. I'm just gonna fix that with a little bit of glue on there. <clears throat> okay, well, look at that. There's our structure. Now, what we're gonna do, so you'll notice that we've got this piece here. We're gonna start by putting glue on this tab here. Now, I wanna fold that in a little bit more. Hopefully you can see that, yeah, you can see that. Let's get some glue right out to the very edge here. And actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna see this because it's gonna be covered up by, um, by the wings. So don't worry too much about being perfect with this, but you still wanna get it nice and aligned. I wouldn't worry about not getting a perfect seam though because you're not gonna see this. So just make sure you get enough glue on there and that, and that it sticks, okay? And then what we're gonna do is this tab here for the back, we're gonna take a little bit of glue right onto the bottom part there, okay? Just at the bottom of that section so that we can take that and glue it to this section here. And this strip here that we glued down, wants to, you need that to be flush with the back of this, okay? And it's gonna, it's gonna angle a little bit, and that's normal, that's by design. Okay, so, oops. I need to be patient here. I got a little glue on my thumb and it kind of pulled it away there for a second. Okay. There we go. That's looking sharp. And again, we're gonna do this one more time. And if you want, you can actually, what I did the second time on the second tab was I just put a little bit of glue here where this piece is gonna overlap it. If you want, you can do that at this point now just to get it on there. I'm gonna go a little heavy because I need a little extra time to get this tab, get some glue on this tab, I should say. Oops. Okay, and then you're just gonna fold that over, and glue that to that tab. I'd focus on one tab at a time. I don't know if you're gonna be able to do both of them at the same time, but if you do, that's pretty cool. But if not, it's not the end of the world. And now I'm working on this tab here, getting that one glued, making sure that that's nice and flush with this little flap here that we just used to connect everything together. Okay, so that's that. All right, let's let that sort of set for a little bit before we put the roof on here. In the meantime, that's really all that's left is the roof and these little pieces here. So what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna glue these on nice and flush at the bottom so that they match up with this little corner here. Okay, and I would focus on making sure that this edge, well, just focus on that edge. Don't worry about where the back of this terminates. We wanna make sure that this is nice and lined up with the front of the house just to kind of make it look seamless, okay? And then also, of course, make sure that it's flush at the bottom as well. You don't want this piece kind of floating in the air. So I'm gonna get that as close as I can to the front there, like that. Okay, and if you have a little bit of brown or a little bit of black peeking through, don't worry about it, that's fine. Get that nice and aligned. There we go. That looks sharp. Yeah, I mean, and there's really no way to avoid not seeing a little bit of black there because, well, just because it's not. <laughs> All right, so do the same thing on the other side, giving that roof some extra time to dry here before we put our little bat wings on. Okay. So there is our structure. And uh, again, next thing we're gonna do is just put our roof together. So I think the best thing to do, uh, the roof's gonna go like this. 
and we've got these, um, these little accents at the top. I'm going to glue the accents together first, and I think that's going to help make this a lot easier. So just get, get a little bit of glue on these little accents here. Okay. And you can kind of do it like this too to make it easier. Just line them up and then kind of squeeze them together like that. I don't think we've ever done anything like that before. It's kind of cool. Okay, now we can just kind of push it flat. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put this on like so. Okay, just like that. And give, make sure that top part kind of sticks and uh, is nice and dry before you move on. Um, so the front here, well, let's just get our glue on these tabs here. We can, we can, work, we can work one at a time, one side at a time. Uh, we don't need to do all of it at the same time, but I would focus and make sure that you get your glue out to the edge here on the front and back, because that's gonna need to be kind of flush. The bottom part here where the bat wing is gonna hang over, not a big deal. And also just make sure that you're putting it on right. Um, it only goes on correctly one way, and I'm not doing it right. <laughs> there we go, just like that. Okay, see I got a little extra glue there, not a big deal because our wing is going to be covering that up and just make sure that you get that nice and aligned, nice and flush on the front. Okay. And I'm probably going to need to paint this cause I didn't get enough glue on there. That's what I'm going to do right now. And get a little extra glue here and actually I'm going to take this off because I got nowhere near enough glue on that. So I need to go a little bit heavier with this. It's kind of a weird shape too. So I want to make sure that we get it on there nicely. There we go. That should work. Okay. So it kind of slopes down and maybe this is the best way to do it. Just kind of leave it on your surface, leave it on your table and then just do it that way. There we go. And make sure that you've got it nice and centered, nice and lined up. And give that a few seconds to dry. And again, the, uh, the little bat wing is gonna cover up this part here. So I'm not overly concerned about a little extra glue sticking out there. And take a look at the seam there. Make sure it's nice and nice and tight. That looks good. And then we can peel this back now and get our glue on the remaining tabs. And then of course, get that glue right out to the edge. That's kind of the most important part there to get a nice clean seam there. Like that. And like that. And close that up. And that should kind of just fall into place because we've already got it halfway anchored. There we go. And voila. So that's our roof. Very simple, just an odd shape. So I wasn't used to it too. And remember, this is my first time doing this, believe it or not. Uh, I do kind of go through a, uh, a mental run down and kind of piece things together in my head before I do it for the first time on video. But that in fact was my first time ever making this. Okay. So there it is. That's kind of cool. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take and I'm going to grab a dowel and we're just going to ever so slightly, um, kind of just kind of train this so that so the wing kind of comes in. It's almost like it's kind of hugging the house. Okay. Just ever so slightly. You can, you can add more or less if you want. That's up to you. Um, but I'm just kind of showing you how I'm planning on doing it. And all we're going to do now is just glue that 
right to the top there and you can see what that's going to look like. So with that said, and you can always train that after the fact too. Let's just get our glue on this guy here. Okay, and that is going to be somewhat flush in some of the areas here. Let me get a little more glue on there. I'm just going to spread that out and right out to the edge. Okay. Now make sure you get the right one for the right side. You want the wings kind of pointing um, towards the front of the house. Okay, so I'm just going to get that lined up correctly right up to where we've got that little fence design thing happening. And that looks about right. Yes, indeed. I'm just going to hold that in place for a moment. There we go. And you could also take and kind of, I'm going to need a smaller dowel for this, just take and curl the tips of these inward a little bit too. Just a little bit. You can even just use your fingers if you need to. Okay, that looks cool. All right, other side here. Oh, it looks like I had a little boo boo here. Where did my little sheet go? There it is. I need to fix that. You see how that just kind of came up? I'm going to throw a little glue on here and just paint a little glue underneath here and fix that little fix that little boo-boo up so it stays down. It'll be covered up, but I still want everything to be nice and glued down. Okay, that looks good. I might have crushed it or something. Anyway, not a big deal because it's got to be covered up. I guess you just got to make the mistakes at the right time so you don't go messing everything up. All right, I'm just going to paint that glue right out to the edge there, like so, and get my other wing on here. I'm just kind of butting it up to that little area up there where we've got the little fence, fence work, I guess you'd call it. Okay, and I'm going to pop this up. You guys are going to have to probably look at my second camera here, camera B, and I'm going to use that to show you the end result, and that looks pretty, pretty awesome, actually. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Okay, great. Well, that's pretty much it, so I'm just going to grab a, a little light, a little um, electronic tea light. You don't want to put a real candle in here, obviously, but there is your final result. And I think it looks pretty darn cool. And um, that's pretty much it. So for the first one, hello, Mr. Fly, this is not your house, excuse me. Uh, pretty awesome design here. It will definitely um, look really cool along with the other two and the bundle, which I hope you join me for here in just a moment. And um, again, it will also likely complement our, our uh, Midnight Manor as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and maybe a like button and leave a comment on YouTube. And if you do make this or any of the projects from our new Halloween bundle, definitely visit us on Facebook by doing a search for Dreaming Tree Group up at the top of Facebook and join myself and we're almost at 7,500 dreamers. It's not the official page. We've got almost 40,000 there, but this is probably the most active group. Um, we have a lot of giveaways and uh, a lot of um, inspiration going on there. So I hope you join us there. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.